Good evening, YouTube, BookTube. This is Johnny. Time to make a video on Monday Reads. It is a Monday here in West Michigan. It is March the 11th. It is 7.56 at night. It is 69 degrees inside the Hermit Hut. So I've been reading the last couple of days. Well, today I volunteered at the library I used bookstore, The Book Nook, and I continue reading this book, Nervous States, Democracy and the Decline of Reason by William Davies. I'm really enjoying this. It's, it's kind of philosophical. It goes into, you know, it goes into uh, all kinds of ideas. Go, analysis of, of Hobbes, the Thiathon, uh, the beginning of the nationhood, and all kinds of things. It's, um, it's, it's uh, I don't know, if it says here, in this age of intense political conflict, we sense objective fact is growing less important. Experts are attacked as partisan Statistics and scientific findings are decried as propaganda and public debate dissolve, devolves into personal assaults. How did we get here and what can we do about it? Uh, I really, you know, if you're really into analysis of what's going on in American culture, politics, what's going on in the world over in Europe. This is a good book to read. I was reading this today at the Book Nook. The Book Nook was very quiet today. Uh, I'm the only person that really bought anything. Uh, I've also been reading, I showed this in previous videos, uh, this novel by Roger Rosenbratt, Thomas Murphy. It's a story of uh, an elderly poet named Thomas Murphy who is an Irishman and he's elderly, his wife has died, his best friend has died. He's, become, he's losing his memory and he's looking over his past. And it's kind of written in a poetic kind of way and it's kind of humorous, kind of bittersweet. Uh, but I've been reading this, I'm almost halfway through with it, just a little, it's like a novella. And I've been reading, I've shown this, I really got into this last couple evenings. I read this into past midnight last night, this historical fiction, The Age of Light. It's historical fiction on the life of Lee Miller, who was back in the 20s. Uh, she was a Vogue model from New York City. She went to Paris. She got... To uh, make a long story short, she became an, uh, an assistant to the surrealist painter and photographer Man Ray in Paris. And she learned from him photography. Well, she knew photography. Her father was an amateur photographer. That's a whole other story. And But it's kind of like the novel, the historical novel is based on their three-year relationship. Apparently, from what I've read, I've read... Uh, biographical sketches of Lee Miller and her relationship with Man Ray. I read it online, videos, and also I read in this last night, I came uh, I was looking at some booktube and uh, they mentioned this writer Francine Prose and I remembered this book and I got it out and I read yesterday the chapter on Lee Miller and being mused by, it's called The Lives of the Muses, Nine Women and Artists They Inspired. And so there's a chapter in here about Lee Miller and how she inspired Man Ray. So I read that yesterday. Here's a photo that Man Ray took with Lee Miller laying like uh, snuggled up to her father who was I think his name was Douglas Lee. Douglas Lee Minor. <laughs> so I don't know, I read that. And uh, so this is kind of like 
The Age of Light, a novel by Whitney Sh Sh Shar Shaher Sher Sharhar. I can't pronounce it. Shahar. Anyway, it's a. Uh, she kind of fantasizes the author, their relationship over three years. But there's also, there's a time period in Lee Miller's life when the war, Second World broke out. She talked Vogue into giving her an assignment to go into the, to follow this infantry and take photos of battles. And she also went into the concentration camps when the D Germans were defeated and she um, she took pictures she was in London during the bombings uh, when the Nazis were bombing London the city of London in the Second World War and she took photos and she uh, but anyway this novel basically just the, her relationship with Man Ray it ended in th over about three years he was Lee Miller was kind of a, re a rebel. She didn't really like being tied down to any one person. She was kind of a free spirit, especially when she was younger. She met Man Ray when she was in her, in her 20s. Man Ray was an older man. He was in his 40s. And he became very possessive. And basically she left him and started her own photography business in New York City with her brother and things like that. But anyway, I've been reading this. So I went to the book nook today and I brought home these. Well, first of all, I am shown these. I got these at the book nook last week. I got Bemimoth, The History of the Factory and the Making of the Modern World by Joshua B. Freeman. I got this at the book nook last week. And last Friday, I picked up this book at the book nook, An Extremist, The Life and Death of a War Correspondent, Maria Colvin by Lindsay Helson. This has been in the news. It's a very recent book. This is also a recent book, The Behemoth, The History of, of the Factory and the Making of the Modern World. So I got these. When I go to the book nook, I'm always looking for a book to take home that looks interesting, that looks like I would want to look at it or at least read it someday. So I got these. And today I picked up Kennedy's Wars, Berlin, Cuba, La La Laos, and Vietnam by Lawrence Freeman. This is the wars that John F. Kennedy was involved in during his presidency. This is a novel by Pete Hammond, Hammill, Snow in August. I realized when I was cataloging this in my library thing today, I already have this. I have four other novels by him. So I'll take this back to the book nook this coming Friday. Then I found this book at the book nook today, Hippie Food. I saw this on PBS, uh, the author, Jonathan Kaufman. Hippie Food, How Back to the Landers, Long Hairs and Revolutionaries Change the Way We Eat. I don't know, I'm not really into food, but it looked kind of interesting because I like reading about hippies and going back to the land and organic farming and things like that. And then I bought, I had this set aside and they finally put a price on it. It's um, The Diary of Virginia Woolf. The Diary of Virginia Woolf is a five volume set. This is volume four. I have volume one. Volume 3, and now I have Volume 4. I need Volume 2 and Volume 5 to have the complete set. But this is the Diary of Virginia Woolf, edited by Anna Olivier, Olivier Bell. Volume 4, years 1931 to 1935. I really like reading her diaries. She, was very, she really spent a lot of time, Virginia Woolf, writing her diaries. It was something she... She just didn't write them. She just, she really put a lot of herself into her diaries. And then I picked up this book today at the book nook. D.H. Lawrence, the very famous novelist. He was also a painter. These are D.H. Lawrence's paintings. I have told you, I have a large D.H. Lawrence collection. 
the man who the introduction to this by Keith Sagar say Sagar I have his book uh, D.H. Lawrence life into art published in 1985 he also uh, he wrote all kinds the art of Ted Hughes uh, Laughter of Foxes, The Study of Ted Hughes, uh, his magma opus, Literature and the Crime Against Nature, is to be published shortly. I gotta look that up. I didn't know you wrote that. Anyway, he wrote the introduction to this, so I have two books by him now, D.H. Lawrence Paintings by D.H. Lawrence. They're kind of, uh, they're kind of, uh, very a lot of nudity <laughs> male nudity uh, see it's like kind of but anyway I like reading a, I didn't know that I never seen any book I have a book like Jack Kerouac was a painter uh, other writers have been painters I can't think of you know maybe I think Hemingway painted Jack Kerouac painted Dage Lawrence was a painter. Uh, I don't know. Well, you have, you have, of course, you have Churchill. He was a painter. He wrote those massive volumes on the war and history, British history, things like that. But anyway, I got this for my D.H. Lawrence collection, so that's why I got it. I'm not really into <laughs> paintings of nudity, but hey. So that's why I got the book nook. Oh, I also got a CD by Michelle Schacht. I had this years ago. It's kind of like indie rock, kind of like folk Hindi rock. This is kind of, it came out in 1980, 1980, but I got that. And I also got these two. I don't have a record player, but The Right of Spring by, uh, Stravinsky is is the beginning of modernism around the beginning of 19 this came out in 1911 it was it was a landmark uh, composition of modern music and I, I like the cover it's by uh, <laughs> my mind just went blank it's by the by Rousseau uh, about the cover and Henry Rousseau, nickname is, uh, this is the Charmus de Serpents, Snake Charmer. I like, I, he's one of my favorite painters. So I got this, and I also picked this up. I have this on cassette. This goes back to my days of youth, <laughs> before I was married and when I lived out in California, and I used to go around in my old car. I had a boom box, and I had a cassette, Jackson Brown, running on empty. Some of my favorite albums when I was in my early 20s. I just could, it was only a dollar. <laughs> I don't have a record player, but I like the cover. Jackson Brown, Money on Empty. So, I don't know. So that's what I got at the book nook. That's what I have been reading the last couple of days to, to, to Monday night. Carol has been calling me from used bookstores. I've gotten, she's got me five books. <laughs> She got me yesterday, last night she was at a bookstore, restaurant kind of place in Seattle, Washington. And she bought, you know, she was going through a list of books on the shelves, used books. And there was an H.P. Lovecraft biography and the letters of Philip Larkin to uh, Mariam or Mariam, uh, a friend of his that he wrote to for 40 years. She got me a biography on Philip Dick, and a biography on Samuel Pipps, and one of Picasso's wives' uh, journals and diaries, something like that. So she's always she's always remembering me when she's at used bookstores or at Nero used bookstore or at a library book sale. Or I'm gonna tell her. When she's in Denver, don't get me more books. I don't know if she's going to get them all home. So, yeah. So, I'm do I'm feeling better today. I don't... I feel a little... A little bit. But 
The Lord's given me grace and strength to keep on going. Tomorrow's a Tuesday. Today it was sunny, supposed to be in the, up to 60s. But then it get cold again towards Thursday and Friday. But Tuesday and Wednesday is supposed to get really warm and rainy. It's melting the snow. So spring is coming. Carol's been having a good time, which I'm thankful for. I want my wife to have a good time with family and her grandchildren. So the Lord's given me grace. I'm not freaking out. So, so I hope you're having a good Monday, that you'll have a good reading week. And until next time, bye.